So a couple more questions on rope walking. Um, I've been involved in thinking about rope walking for about 10 years now. I have three issued patents for knee ascenders. And so I want to do some tips and tricks and clarify a few things and how to help people be as efficient as they possibly can when they're rope walking. So this is going to be my demonstration. I have this could be any multi sender, our life support multi sender that keeps us safe. If whatever we're standing on disappears and we find ourselves weightless, it needs to engage. It needs to be free to operate. Um, it should be uninhibited from um, not being able to perform. I mean, it shouldn't be impeded. So it's important in in my perspective to keep this area clear this would represent well, this is a rope climb harness or a, a sit harness and so you can imagine somebody's standing here and then they're walking i've made a bit of a drawing right here this represents water and um, this area right here in the dotted lines is where our rope walking takes place in my opinion the advantage to uh, a knee ascender like the Saka and some of my patented devices is that I can keep rope walking under the water in other words all of this rope walking never sees the air my life support never gets wet and that's important because if you have anything coming from your knee ascender that by that passes your life support it can affect that life support depending on the conditions that you find yourself in so let me talk about this water concept again too so when you think about it this is this is our foot ascender down here right i'm going to try to so we're standing on the ground down here, right? Got my foot ascender, got my knee ascender. This represents the stride that we can take, all right? So when the foot ascender comes up, it's limited to its travel on the rope by the knee ascender. So when that comes up and then we take the next step, the knee ascender is limited to how far it can travel up the rope by the multi sender. And of course, then we just repeat and we take the multi sender straight up the rope. The advantage to having the bungee in this configuration is that this can come all the way up to the bottom of the multi sender. So the socket will keep rope walking where rope walking belongs. In other words, it keeps it all under the water and it keeps it away from the. Um, life support now what a lot of people will do is and this is personal choice but they'll take this and they'll attach it to a chest harness someplace all right and that's that's one way to do it but you don't have to do that the big advantage to this is that you don't have to do that and here's a question that i get um 10 years ago i thought the teeth were a little too aggressive and they were picking the rope. So, but I don't know if you can see this, but what I did is I took a little Dremel. That's probably not gonna focus that close, is it? Or it is? So I took a little Dremel and I dulled these off just a little bit and I thought, oh great, now it won't pick the ropes. Well, then it wouldn't engage, it started to slip. Um, so that's a, that's a uh, recurring question that I get. This is just a needle right here, so very sharp. It's, um, it's not a leather cutting type of a needle. If you ever sew with leather, leather uh, those have a kind of a chisel point. This is a sharp point. Splicers would use something like this. I can sit here and I can poke this rope all day long and it doesn't damage the rope because it's sharp enough that it separates all of the fibers and just penetrates and then comes right back out. So it's not how sharp these points are to pick a rope. It's how you pull it out once it's been engaged. If I stick it into that rope just a little bit like that and I pull it straight out, 
it's not going to pick the rope. If I pick it, if I stick it in and then I pull it out this way, it's going to pick the rope. Same thing with the teeth on my ascender. They're designed at an angle. In fact, I've shortened the, the distance on this for greater or better engagement for a typical 11 and a half or so millimeter rope. But it's very important that when this engages, when this engages the rope, it comes down, and it'd be cool if I cut one of these off, you could see the teeth. Um, but the teeth come down and then they stick straight into the rope. When you disengage this, you want to make sure that all of the weight is off of it. And I've designed this cam so that it only goes in one direction. And when you take the weight off of it, in fact, if you're moving it up a little bit, those teeth will come out of the rope without ever picking the rope. It'll pick the rope if that weight's not completely off. And then you pull this out like that. You can feel it right now. This is picking. I don't have a lot of weight on there, so it's not going to damage the rope. But you can feel that picking right there. Take your ascender and get used, get used to being able to disengage this cam with a slight lift and an upward motion to disengage that cam and you will never pick the rope. Okay, so over the years I've made some changes and improvements and development and things, but this was, I mean, we, we did a redesign on the, on the teeth, the tooth pattern and all those kind of things. Um, and another improvement that I found to be very helpful is I shortened the arm on the cam right there. And you can tell the difference between these. The bodies are the same, but you'll notice this cam sits up a little higher than this cam. So this was the, this was the older model. Most ascenders, um, being that tree climbing probably is not as big as some of the other uh, disciplines, uh, most of them cater to smaller rope diameters. And so with the uh, smaller rope diameters, um, they were designed uh, to engage on a smaller rope. And when the ropes got bigger, the cam would open up a lot more. So what we found was that I've cut the body on this and you can see that this is, is pretty good, but this is the engagement part of that cam and the teeth. If somebody is climbing uh, using the newest knee ascender, if their feet get out of alignment quite a bit, that can rock up so far that the um, cam can't engage it uh, you know if they're way over here of course the cams gonna slip down some people actually use the technique to get the ascender to slide down it's kind of a different point but, but anyway so um, by shortening this what we did is we made it more conducive to the discipline of tree climbing or of larger ropes you can see now that as this progresses up the rope more of the meat of the teeth will engage on the rope. And even if somebody's technique is off, their angle is off, you'll still have the heel of that cam that's able to engage on the rope. So it was a, uh, an improvement. Um, we also made some improvements to the latch and things. Um, and so, some might ask, well, what, what about engaging on smaller diameter ropes? So <clears throat> this, is, this is a really small diameter rope. This is kind of retired, but this is a six millimeter power cord, sterling power cord. And you can still see that there's plenty of teeth still to engage that cam. And so it, it works. I even use it on my four millimeter retrieval line. Uh, it'll still engage even the smallest of ropes. Um, 
there's plenty of action on that. So it still works on the really small ropes, but the point is it works much better on 11 millimeter, 11.5, 11 11.7, 11 12 millimeter ropes that arborists will usually use uh, meeting that half inch requirement. So. so all I did is cut that open so you can see right into the can. Kind of cool. This is the Sokka Mini. It's also patented, uh, patented in that it's got an adjustable length uh, buckle that allows a person to adjust the length of the stride. But I want to show you, and it's an easier, um, it's an easier make, so it's not as expensive. The patented concept is that we can adjust this stride right here. But notice, if I put this at the bottom of my multi-sender, how far up can this pull? It can't, it can't pull up to the bottom of the multi-sender because you have to have bungee into the system. It requires that a person take and make that attachment above or next to where the multi-sender is. Now that's just fine when, when everything's working properly, but if you don't manage this and this comes off somehow and ends up hanging up on part of your multi-sender, there's a lot of multi-senders that are sensitive to uh, things sitting on the top of them. Especially when we're rope walking and that multi-sender has no tension in it. Without any tension in, the, in that multi-sender, it's real easy to push that top down. But there's instances where um, somebody will have their foot ascender come off and then basically go to the ground. Um, that brings up another good point. Although the ascenders here are not life support, they do provide a backup. If for whatever reason your multi-sender doesn't engage on the rope, it's going to come down and it's going to lay on top of your knee ascender. If you don't have a knee ascender, it'll come down and lay on top of your um, foot ascender. So basically your foot is going to be jammed up to the bottom of your multi-sender and you'd probably be pretty uncomfortable. So think of the knee ascender again as uh, life support. But also remember that if you don't have the bungee that extends down below the a sender, you need to have all that bungee up over your shoulder or someplace else in order to get enough travel out of that bungee. Um, let me let me point out to how responsive this is. Um, this is still attached to my boot, but um, when you when you're running up a rope, you want to make sure your feet are going straight up and down the rope. I always remember a conversation I had with Travis uh, Vickerson. I was explaining to him that the feet have to go side by side, straight up and down the rope. And he said, oh, you mean like pistons? And I said, yeah, exactly. So, you know, your hips and your knees are, are doing what the uh, rod and the camshaft and all those parts would do in turning, but the piston is going straight up and down the rope. So um, this provides a very uh, responsive rebound straight up to the bottom of the multi -center. Um While I'm talking about it, one of the things that will damage your knee ascender the most or give it the most wear is if you take it off and you just attach it to the side of your harness and leave it on your boat, boot. This bungee is gonna drag around through the tree. You're gonna catch it on the tree and it's not going to be good for it. So a lot of guys, uh, Sean Welch taught me how to, um, to store the bungee or the, the, the knee ascender, the, the socket. This is quite flexible. You don't want to fold it all the way or you'll crease the uh, tubing there. Um, but he would fold it and put it up underneath and around his leg. Some guys put it around their back. But take the time to store it. 
your your knee ascender is going to save you a lot of time and energy getting up into the tree but once you get up into the tree store it properly the foldable socket of course performs just like the regular socket except that now it's easily stored on the back of your harness um, little tip when you fold up the socket or fold the foldable so again it's it's going to have pretty much the same performance going up and down the rope but now you can store it so if you're running the bungee fairly short like this is if you fold it first then you'll find that you can't get enough bungee out to do the wrap it's, it becomes really hard to pull it around there um, what I find helps very much is I'll take this uh, bungee and I'll hold it in my hand and I will give it a little bit of a pull and I'll pull some out before I fold it. Now I'll fold it. Now I have all this bungee to stretch around and then I just latch it over that cam. It just makes it really easy. Now this, when you drag it around the tree, is not going to get all torn up, damaged, and pulled, and bungee broken. Another reason for having aggressive teeth on the knee ascender. When the foot ascender steps down onto the rope, it's doing so um, when, when there's no tension on that rope. In other words, your multi-sender or your knee ascender will be holding your weight. And so the foot ascender can engage the rope when there's no tension on it. When the knee ascender engages the rope, that's not true because a climber will be standing with his foot ascender. So now this is very tight. And with, with all my weight on here, you can feel the cover gets pulled tight. And so it makes it more important to have those teeth where they're not dull and they will properly engage on a tensioned rope. Um, if it was just like a spline cam or something like that, it'd have a really hard time. So the other uh, great advantage to the sock is that there is a buckle in here. Just like the mini, you can adjust the stride. There's nothing in here as far as travel that impedes the uh, function of the bungee and you can take this buckle here you can lengthen the stride or you can shorten the stride if a user wanted to they can even cut off the bottom part of this bungee guide and make it shorter for children or something so when you purchase you don't have to decide what size you want or anything this is a more traditional bungee that has full stride I mean, you get, I don't know, I, I could never have that much walking right there. So it's got, a, it's got a lot of stretch to it. This stretch right here doesn't take your energy away. In other words, whatever energy I spend pushing down with my foot is not energy wasted. What happens is when I lift my foot, now I've got that stored energy. That energy comes right back to me and allows my multi sender to come back up the rope. So if somebody tells you that it's like an exercise machine because it's got a fairly strong bungee, it's just not the case because whatever, whatever, you, whatever you push down is stored energy that gets released when you raise your foot.